All right, AP US history family. Man, I bet you guys are tired of these videos, but we only have a few more to go. Um, today's assignment, you're going to need to watch the entire video uh, because I'm going to go through the worksheet with you and basically give you answers. So yeah, on yesterday's assignment, I asked you guys to, um, to look at and complete a worksheet on the sample DBQ that AP released. Now, again, I think this is a really valuable resource because I think it's going to tell us a lot about the exam they're going to give us on Friday. So number one, so take out that worksheet and you can listen to me and pause me. And as we go, number one says, where would you actually find the prompt? And you know what you might want to even do is pull up the assignment from yesterday. So if you're looking at um, the DBQ they gave you, First page just says 2020 exam, skip that. Second page starts with directions, skip the directions. I know you're like, what? A teacher saying skip the directions? I already can tell you what the directions are. You're already familiar with the rubric. You do not have time to read the directions. But the question that I asked you again is well, where do you actually find the question? Well, the place that you're actually gonna find the question is you're gonna go down to that first document document one, and the, the question is right above document one, okay? So there's your answer for the worksheet is it's right above document one. Number two, how did Locke reword the question so it was easier to understand? Okay, so I'm gonna slide that over for my own sanity. Um, the question that they asked you was to evaluate the relative importance of the causes of cultural change in the United States in the period from 1914 to 1945. This is really important because as I've started to, you know, give you guys DBQs and ask you to do some writing, many of you are writing well and you're writing good thesis, but you're not actually answering the questions. So really make sure you answer the questions. And I've even sent like example questions from the last like 20 years of AP exams to people so they can just practice reading questions. So again, the question says, evaluate the relative importance of the cause of cultural change in the United States in the period from 1914 to 1945. So basically, here's how I reworded the question. What caused cultural change from 1914 to 1945? And if you don't believe me, you can even look. Like this was my little note sheet when I got it the first time. Oh, it's going to be backward. It's not going to mirror right, but it says... What caused the cultural change from 1914 to 1945? So, boom, you need to, I, I recommend that. Here's what you need to do. If you are typing your essay, you need to have a notepad and a piece of paper, because I would type mine. If you are handwriting the essay, you need to have one notepad that you're writing on and another notepad that you can take your notes on, okay? You really want to be set up and be prepared and ready to go for this. All right, so I reworded the question. Now, the next question on the worksheet is number three. Why is it so important to make sure you fully understand the question before you start looking at the documents? Why is it? Sorry, I got a typo here. So important. Okay, here's why it's important. Because otherwise, you're going to end up writing an essay to the wrong question. All right? If you thought... It was something about, you know, what was the cultural change or was the cultural change good or bad? You're not going to do it right. But what you need to do is you need to say, okay, for every source I'm looking at, I need to figure out what's the cultural change in, in the source or, or better yet, what is causing the cultural change? Because that's really what the essay question is about, is what caused the cultural change in America? What was the main things that caused the cultural change? So for every document, I need to write down um, a little note about what the document's basically about and what caused the change. And so what I did here is I know it's hard because it's backwards, is there's five sources, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, the fourth document I couldn't figure out the first time through, so I skipped it, and then I came back to it. So let's literally go through this. All right, document one. Here we go. Um, right away, you should you should have noticed um, source ATMS. Pay attention to who's talking here. 
Um, Charles S. Johnson reporting on interviews with African-American migrants. Boom, 1917. So you already know this is from the black perspective and you already know they're migrants. Okay, black migrants, African-American migrants uh, in 1917. That's right around, that's during the end of, towards the end of World War I. I guarantee you this document is about the Great Migration. You, If you were able to make those connections, you wouldn't even need to read it. So if you look at mine right here, I wrote Great Migration, uh, people were moving for jobs and money. Okay. And because it gives you a little bit more details about why this guy was moving. So, so right in my brain, I'm like, okay, well, one of the cultural changes is you have groups of people moving from one region to another. Black people moving from the South to the North is going to change the culture in the North because they're bringing with them their culture and their ideas. The other thing that's, you know, changing culture is jobs and opportunities and money. All right. Those are kind of two in that one. Okay. Document number two. All right. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. So number three, have we talked about document number one, the movement of people and job opportunities is going to change culture. And number four on the worksheet is about document number two. Okay. Document number two. All right. I've told you this before and I'm going to tell you it again. At least one of your documents on the exam on Friday is not going to have writing on it. It's or it's going to be mostly a picture, a political cartoon. Okay, so document two, closing the gate, Chicago Tribune, nineteen nineteen. Okay, closing the gate. It, and if you now you have to actually read on the picture. You have a gate, which is funny because we're trying to build a fence in our backyard. Sorry, that's my brain just in. It's reminding the picture's reminding me of that. Okay, leave me alone. All right, um, it says immigration restrictions. And that's the gate, and the gate's going to be closing, okay? And the reason the gate's closing is because they're limiting immigrants. So, okay, one of the things that I wrote down here is World War I immigration reform backslash Red Scare, okay? So one of the things that's changing culture is now here's where you get your outside information. I could say the Immigration Reform Act of 1924. And in fact, I made you that beautiful, nice study guide. Download that, have it on an extra computer, have it on a, your phone, print it if you have a printer. I don't have a printer, but, um, and you just need to, okay, well, this, this essay is about a time period from 1914 to 1941. So I'm gonna scroll to that study guide that Locke gave me. And I know that any outside information I, can, I need, I can pull from that part of the timeline. Okay, so I, I would drop the Immigration Restriction Act or Reform Act of 1924, which limited immigrants. You could talk about the Bolshevik Revolution or the Red Scare um, and people being scared of communists. That's changing the culture. The culture in America during this time period is becoming more anti-communist. All right, here we go. Next question. Okay, so we are on number five, which is examining document five or document three, excuse me. Document three. And you notice that these passages are short. The passages on your AP exam will be short. Um, they're not going to be long because they know that you guys don't have a lot of time to do this. Again, I think if you write a good thesis, two body paragraphs, cite and explain and analyze as many sources as you can, boom, you're going to get a passing grade. All right, document three. Uh, Fanny Hurst, New York Times, 1923. I'm going to have to read this one. It's not giving me enough information to just make an inference and make a connection. The place of women of intelligence is not inevitably in the kitchen worrying about pot and pan trifles, not at the front door every evening waiting tremendously nervously for the step of her John in fearful lest the roast be overdone. Her place is where she can give the most service and get the most out of her life. Okay, so boom. One of the things that caused cultural change um, and uh, women wanting to be respected and wanting to be looked at the same way a man is looked at um, and chasing their dreams is in 1920, the 19th Amendment. So for number three, I said on my sheet, I said, OK, well, women's rights. This one's about women's rights. And how that's and I, and I wrote down after the 19th Amendment, boom, if I talk about the 19th Amendment and what that is there, because I knew that happened in 1920, there is another 
outside information point. Um, the other thing I could talk about to get more outside information points and sound really smart is talk about the flappers in the 1920s. All right, so now we've broken down document three. Okay, document four. I struggled with this one. I'm going to be honest with you. I skipped it the first time through. So for document four, I read it the first time I read it. It said the present era of prosperity may be enduring, but the movie, radio, cheap reading, and motor car with all they stand for have come to stay. They did not originate in deliberate desire to divert attention from political interest, does not lessen their effectiveness in that direction. The political elements in the constitution of the human being, those having to do with citizenship, are crowded to one side. Let there be introduced the topic of mechanism and accomplishments of various makes of motor cars or the respective merits of actresses and the dialogue goes on at a lively pace. So to be honest with you, the first time through, I said, you know what, if I was doing this DBQ and I was tight on time, I would skip this one because I don't get it. Or I'd at least look at document five to see if I understand that better. So after I went to document five, I jumped back to document four, read it again. The thing that they're arguing that you can use this document for, document four is actually all about inventions. And the reason I put that squiggly mark there is because I had a question mark there because I couldn't figure it out. But then I went back and figured it out and scribbled out my question mark. So this is all about inventions. And inventions really do change a culture. Um, cars change a culture. It was cool to have cars. And you have cars, you need to start um building more roads and it really did change we are a car culture in america to this day so inventions really can change a culture all right now document number five so on your worksheet right now i am on number seven hold on just fixing this document and if i ever say source i mean the same thing as document so on number seven says what caused the cultural change in document number seven or document number five Okay, so right away it says President Franklin Roosevelt address at the opening of the Museum of Modern Art, 1939. And right away I'm thinking New Deal. Um, I don't remember the name of the law. This is what I was thinking, but I remember he made, he was paying artists to create art um, as part of the New Deal thing. So that's something that can change culture. Yes, art can change culture, but the laws that are passed to pay artists can change culture. Okay, so here we go. So if you go through and you read that one, it talks about the Federal Art Project and the, the Works Progress Administration. I could drop in information about there were other laws passed by FDR and the New Deal um, that, such as the Tennessee Valley um, Association that created jobs for people. All right, so on my paper, I talked about, I wrote down arts and New Deal programs that paid artists. Okay, so now here's what I got. I've got all these different causes and reasons from these sources that led to cultural change in America. But now what I have to do is I have to say, I have to organize these. Do any of these have anything in common? And I found that three of them have, in, have something in common. Three of them were caused by a change in a law. Okay. And remember the questions is like, what caused the most change from 1914 to 1941? Now my thesis becomes the changing of laws caused more ch cultural change in America than anything else. Okay. So what I went back through and I said, okay, well, which of these sources has something to do with laws? Well, um, source number two, you have immigration reform act of 1924. That is a law. Okay. That, that restricted immigrants, um, and changed the culture of America. You have less people coming and bringing their culture. It's going to change the culture in America. Source three, the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote didn't only give them a right to vote, but it empowered them um, to speak their mind more. And that changes the culture in America. And then I would argue that source five, the New Deal, these laws that gave people jobs and especially ones that um, paid artists. That changed the culture in America because for the first time, Americans are looking to the government to help them in hard times. That changes the culture of the country. All right. So where are we at on this worksheet? I know you're tired of me talking, but I want to just show you how I do this. Okay. So number eight, what do three of the sources have in common? They all have to do with laws. So that's my argument. And I'm going to be honest with you. Do I really think laws change culture in America? No, I think the 
the protests and the fight to change those laws are really what changed. But I'm trying to get a good score on this DBQ, and there's evidence here that's going to make it an easy essay. That's what I'm going to go with. Um, what should the first sentence of your thesis include? The first sentence of your thesis should include your counter argument. The second sentence of your thesis should be, however, and then the evidence that you're going to use to support your argument, but just generally, not the nitty gritty details. And then I've been adding this just to be sure that the reader, the grader of your exam is very clear. The third sentence is going to be a therefore in summarizing your argument. So here we go. I'm going to read you the thesis that I jotted down really quickly the first time I looked at these sources. Here's my counter argument. The movement of people groups. Oh, excuse me. The movement of groups of people and new inventions led to cultural change in America between World War One and World War II. Okay, that's my counter argument. Yeah, moving of, moving of people and new inventions, they, 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 they cause some change. However, the primary driving force behind cultural change in the first half of the 20th century was legislation and laws passed by the U.S. government around immigration, women's rights, and economic reform. Boom. Okay, so that second body paragraph, we're going to talk about the great migration, the movement of people. We're going to talk about inventions. But that third paragraph, I'm going to hit you with laws, immigration laws, voting rights laws for women, and economic reform laws in the New Deal. That's my third paragraph is going to be about. And here's my therefore sentence where I bring it all together and I summarize my argument. All right, where did I leave off here? Da, 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 da. Therefore, U.S. legislation, um, U.S. legislation caused more cultural change than anything else from the beginning of World War One to the end of World War Two. Boom, I'm summarizing it up. The primary cause of cultural change was loss, even though I don't know if I agree with that, but that's what I'm going to write my essay about because that's the easiest thing to do here. Okay, now, here's the other thing that I figured out with this essay question. They're gonna, So there's these eight themes in AP US history that they try to really emphasize, and I'm going to go through those with you right now. And I think the question is going to, you know, be a bigger chunk of time period. It's not going to be just a short. Okay. Um, and they're going to ask you to answer the question from a theme. The theme in this question was obviously culture. All right. So, but there's eight themes in U.S. history, AP U.S. history. We've talked about a lot of these themes throughout the school year, but I'm going to go over them with you right now. Um, number 12, define Ameri American and national identity. So if they ask you a question about identity, that's just basically like, what does it mean to be American? At this time period in history, what did you have to be to be American? We know that for the majority of U.S. history to truly be American, based on the laws and the culture, was to be a white man, especially a wealthy white man. And that has changed over time. Okay? American and national identity means what does it mean to be American according to that time period? All right? 13, politics and power. Politics and power means, does it have anything to do with um, political parties or government reforms? So you could talk about the progressive movement, the Whigs, um, the Democrats, the Republicans, conservatives, liberals. That is politics and power. All right. If the question says anything about work exchange and technology, that has to do with how are people making money? All right. Um, and how do how does technology or inventions help people make money? That could be the cotton gin. That could be the steam engine. That could be um, cars. Okay. How are people making money and what impact does that have? Work. Exchange of money for work. And how does technology influence that? All right. Culture and society. Um, that was this essay question that the sample essay question, how is American culture constantly changing? All right. And according to my thesis, um, laws were changing American culture and society. All right. Migration and settlement. Uh, this is anytime you have the movement of people, you could talk about westward expansion or manifest destiny or immigrants coming to America or the great migration of African-Americans from the south to the north. All of those would fit in. Migration and settlement, 
geography and environment? How does the actual land and climate impact American history? Let's be honest. There is slavery would have happened in the North if it would have been hot enough to grow cotton and rice and tobacco, um, but it wasn't. So that shaped the development of the history of this country. Um, if there wasn't gold out West, probably less people would have moved there. There wouldn't have been a dust bowl if the ground wasn't a certain way. Okay, so geography and environment matter. And then the last theme is America in the world. Okay, America in the world has to do with anything when the United States is messing with another country or people from another region of the world. World War I, World War II, War of 1812, Revolutionary War, um, the Monroe Doctrine. You know, all of those are America flexing its muscles and trying to establish itself in the world. Okay. All right. Almost done. Number 19. What did you have typed at the top of your Google Doc or written at the top of your paper? paper the day before the exam. So by tomorrow, every single person, if you're going to type it, you should have a Google Doc open with your APID number that should already be, today is the day that it should be sent to you. It should already be in your AP, um, your My AP Classroom account. You need to type that across the top with your initials. If you are handwriting your essay, you need to write that across the the piece of paper where you're going to write your essay, your APID number, and you're also going to need to put your initials there. That needs to be there ahead of time, okay, before you even start typewriting. Because if you type and submit something and or you handwrite something and take a picture on your phone and submit it and you don't have that written there, then you're not going to get credit. All right, number 20, when will your AP ticket exam code be sent to you? It should be May 13th, 2020. So you're going to look in your My AP account. You're looking for that um, AP ID number or your AP uh, exam ticket. Make sure you have that. If you don't have that, you need to notify me right away so that we can get you one. Otherwise, you won't be able to take the exam. Okay. Last two are your exit ticket questions. Do you have any questions? What additional help do you need? We are almost there, my friends. Peace and love. Miss you guys. Kick butt.